Cajon Pass in San Bernardino County is no stranger to wildfires, and neither are county firefighters. Where this started and then where it moved and how fast it moved was really unprecedented. We've never seen that kind of activity that fast uh, and that widespread. The Blue Cut Fire started on August 16th and within three days exploded to 37,000 acres. 29 aircraft are assigned to the fight, including 17 helicopters that repeatedly make the round trip flight from the pond at Incident Command to the east and west sides of the fire, dropping hundreds of gallons of water each time. Uh, where it got real active last night. The overall effort is massive. 1,584 personnel, 178 engines, and countless volunteers. The Blue Cut Fire created complex challenges for emergency managers. It immediately damaged California's critical infrastructure, highways, power lines, underground gas lines, and railroads. One of Union Pacific's trestles burned the first night. So one of the key components to California's infrastructure and economy is the railroad. And what you're seeing over here is what just burned. That is the Mojave Mainline Bridge. When that burned, that severely crippled the railroad's ability to bring goods, not only to California, but to the entire country. When trains can't move, things going out of and coming into California come to a screeching halt, especially when those trains come right from the ports of LA and Long Beach. That really set a, a series of cascading impacts in motion. All, all the ships that were coming in from foreign ports were put on hold. Uh, the, what, what ships that were coming into port, uh, we had to stack up the, the material in the port, which then created a, a big backlog. And it goes to show that disasters, while they're local, have a national and international impact. So the number one priority, next to saving lives and homes, is to get the trains back on track. UP crews are likened to worker ants. They swarm the damage and immediately go to work to fix it. The trestle burned so hot, it warped the steel tracks to the point they can't be used. So they're fabricating the parts they need right on site. They expect the bridge to reopen in just a few more days. Not far away, a tanker sprays water on tracks threatened by fire. They've already lost part of that track. Up the highway, crews repair power lines taken down by the raging fire. And I-15, a major trucking and commuter route, was reopened after flames forced its closure. The constant pounding by mutual aid ground and aerial crews and the planning and strategy that put them there slowed the fire's advance on this day three. And really this team did a great job, but we, we were all working together, Sacramento, Washington, D.C., uh, here at the, in San Bernardino at the incident, across the, the board, working together, one team, one fight. The shelters are open for the more than 80,000 people in the evacuation areas, as is the local assistance center here at the San Bernardino Fairgrounds. It's also where more than 600 animals are being sheltered. The community came together to care for the animals and provide for those owners uh, a level of comfort and knowledge that their animals are being maintained while they actually see to their own personal needs. Welcome to my little city, or as I like to call it, my Noah's Ark in the desert. Dave Gross got the call from Animal Care and Control Tuesday night. Could he take any animals? I told them, give me 45 minutes. Within a half hour, I had buckets of water in the stalls. Within the hour, I was receiving animals. And they kept coming, as did donations by the truckload. We have 2,000 pounds of hay that was delivered yesterday, which is 100 bales. We have another 150 bales coming in today. Everything has been donated. Nobody has asked for a penny. Dave and his volunteers have their hands full. All of these pens donated to Dave's cause, caring for the animals of those evacuated folks who were literally in the line of fire. <laughs> Dave says he's gotten 12 hours of sleep in just four days. It's a price he's willing to pay. Is it worth not getting any sleep? Absolutely. When you see these people reunited with their animal, nothing can beat that. Hello. Yes. Get on the camera. <laughs> like Becky Johnson and her horse Lincoln, who's obviously a ham. Becky has two horses here, evacuating before she got the official order. Well, the only reason I evacuated was because of them. Um, they're that important to me. I wouldn't leave them. Never mind that Lincoln is a direct descendant of the legendary Secretariat. Her two horses are family, just like all of the animals out here. 